Welcome to Nucleona Studios. My name is Andrew, and today we're continuing with View Extreme 10. Now, after a long hiatus, I have been quite ill for a few months. We are going to uh, pick up where we left off in our tutorial series. Um, and today we're going to work with hyper, hyper textures and volumetric shading. And we're going to use this to create an incredible rock formation. Um, we're just going to create a basic rock today, and this is only going to be about a 10 minute tutorial. But I am going to show you some incredible features that will enable you to create rocks that you can use in your everyday photograph or you can also use in post-production effects for full feature films. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and create a new scene. Just go with the default scene, that's great. Don't save. Yeah. And um, we're going to quickly uh, modify our scene so that the lighting is optimal. I want you to go in and uh, right click on your atmosphere editor and load the default spectral just in case it's uh, you know your new scene is not uh, set to the uh, the same settings that I just loaded and then we're going to uh, left click my bad left click on the uh, atmosphere editor and I want to make sure that you've got it set up to spectral model and um, bring your lighting down to uh, let's say 12 your, uh, your pitch on your sun down to 12 degrees, make it actually 12 even. Set to global radiosity. Radiosity really brings out the details. Um, zero out your light dome lighting gain. Um, I recommend dragging this color here so that you can reset that color. Your sun, your, uh, your lighting, I'll explain that later in a uh, atmosphere editing tutorial. Just for right now, just click on this and drag it to here. Go to your ambient light and just drag that over to the boat there and maybe add a little more color to it. Make your ambient light fully from the sky, your sunlight to about 80%. Okay, that's about good. Go over to your sky fog and haze and you can get rid of the, sky, the fog completely. Set your haze to 2000, your percentage to 21%-ish. And darken it up, put it in a purple sphere here. That should give you a more accurate haze. Set your sky mean altitude to about 4K, your DK to about 3K. Uh, maybe 5K. Turn your glow intensity up to about 2. Oops, 20. Uh, maybe 10. And your quality boost to 0. should be about here. Excellent. I think that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Alright, that's basically what I want. And that's what you, you this is a good little scene. It's not this is not a professional sky. Alright, I'll work on uh, I'll show you how to make a good, really good sky in a later tutorial as well. This is just something that'll help bring out the uh, the details. I'm actually gonna bring that sun up just a smidgen here. And you'll notice that the color changed, and that's why I wanted you to save this. And set that color back. Okay. We're looking good here. Yeah, that's good. That's good right there. All right. That's great. That's wonderful. We've got exactly what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and create a sphere. And just drag that sphere. You can shrink it down a little bit if you'd like. I'm going to. And just make it centered in your scene. This is great. This is perfect the way I want it. Double click on your sphere. Go ahead and select volumetric material. Go over to lighting and effects and drop down to volumetric hypertexture. Sorry. 
and that is absolutely smashing. It looks exactly like it just did, except for now it's a different material altogether. Double click on this guy, and um, you can pick any one of these. I'm just going to go with, hmm. Transformed crystals. I think I like. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with transformed crystals. Alright, so the overall density, as you can see how it affects the scene, is going to modify your. Um, how much of your scene is affected. And what we're working with here today is basically we're creating a. Uh, we're. In a sense, we're decimating the, uh, the 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 mesh within this sphere um, a better way to look at it is we are creating topography the same way we create uh, procedural ground procedural um, terrains but we're creating it within the sphere and these are um, infinitely procedural so the more you zoom in the more details you're going to get that's the beauty of hypertexture Okay, so we, I'm going to drop my density down to, oh, I don't know, right about there looks good. And I'm going to use a distance field, I think. And, um, yeah, that looks pretty cool. And look at that. Let's go ahead and just render. I mean, that took, what, nine seconds? And just like that, we've created an incredibly detailed-looking rock. Um... Not much more to say about that. I mean, that's incredible. I'm gonna actually duplicate. You can do duplicate an object by right, right, uh, sorry, left clicking and pressing Alt, and dragging that object away. That's pretty cool, right? So now we got that object centered in our scene, and I'm gonna select both of those and create a meta blob. And you'll notice when I click this button here, the two spheres then merge together. Let's render that again. Isn't that awesome? So this is how to use a meta blob to create an, in, a very interesting um, rock formation. Now our scene's a bit bright. I'm just going to darken it. Oops. I'm going to darken it up a little bit. And Very good. Now, uh, once you've done this, you don't want to, you, you, you don't like, I mean, no one's going to create a rock that's just gray. And so our natural response, if you're familiar with Views um, Material Editor, is to just go and double-click on this and change the material. Load one of your own created materials or, or whatever. But because this is a volumetric material, you can't do that from here. You have to do it from here. So let's go in. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab. Uh, oh, I don't know. Let's see here. Sand, soft dunes. Sure, why not? Right. Let's see how that looks. Mm, not so much. Soft dunes have some. Uh, they have their own bump maps, which modify. Try to work with the materials that are already available within view so that everybody else can use them. If I do use any of my own personal materials, I will uh, upload those materials below in the videos below. All right, so I just use Sahara for that. All right, and just like that, we've created what could be an island with cliffs. And so what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to drag this down. I'm not going to get into hyperblobs and metablobs today and how you can utilize them. Um, I'm going to get rid of the ground. I'm going to create an ocean. I'm just going to quickly calm the ocean because it's not really an ocean that I'm looking for. I'm going to tilt that camera down and tilt up. Now, 
I want to remind everyone that's watching right now that we are presently working with preview settings. Okay, this is preview quality. And yet still, we have an incredible lock formation. I mean, look at the details. And I haven't even gone ahead and created a proper rock texture for this. I've gone ahead and just used one of Vue's default textures. And yet we still have a very fascinating looking rock. So this is our, our meta blob. This is a quick little uh, rock formation. Um, that's it. That's all. I mean, there's nothing more to show. Um, what I will do is I will zoom in a bit here, and let's just uh, let's just see how good this looks up close. I actually want to go in here, and we'll make this material 0.5 instead. That'll drastically change the way this looks. And I will create some ground underneath. And let's even create, let's modify the color of our C. I'm a, fan, I'm a big fan of green oceans and green water. Okay, we'll go up a little bit higher there. And I'm going to increase the meta blob size. So that it can sit in the water without... Oops. Just gonna quickly see how fast view can captivate you. And all of a sudden you need to start making um, something more for your scene. Whoops. going to get into modifying too much. But that's not shabby. I think we have made this a little bit too large though, so let's just shrink it down a bit. And I think that is all we need. Let me bring that ground back up a bit. the water just a little too deep and therefore it's not uh, reflecting sunlight as, as I would like it to. Good. Good. Excellent. We'll do a quick preview render of that. I think we're good. And bear in mind, this is only on preview settings. Again, like I've said before, this is a very basic preview settings. That's wonderful. And then I'm going to zoom in just to give you an idea of how much detail you can actually get from one of these guys, from one of the uh, shaders that we've used today, the volumetric shaders and hyper textures. We'll take a little bit here on the render. Now any detail lacking is going to be because of the uh, material that I use, the Sahara Desert. And again, you do want to create your own materials to work with the different uh, geometry that you create. And of course the reason for this is geometry is um, 
you know, your material materials generally for the most part need to be made specifically for your geometry for them to be optimal. And now this still has one more pass to go. Maybe two, actually. No, it's just one. And as you can see, right in here, and I'm not going to continue this, I'm just going to go from here. As you can see right in here, we have exquisite detail on that uh, on that blob. It's um, unbelievable possibilities. Um, in our ne my next tutorial, I will give you a detail on how to make a good material to go with um, a good rock like this. And uh, good materials are absolutely fundamental for creating uh, production-based quality uh, rocks and stuff. So anyway, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have yourself a wonderful day.